Okay, back with you on the Bronx Buzz. And uh, we thank Dean for uh, joining us in our previous segment. But right now, to a friend from a long time, it is uh, Linda Cunningham. She's an artist of significant repute in our borough of the Bronx. So nice to see you, Linda. Yeah. Well, thank you. That's very nice. <laughs> well, it is. And, and you know, you, you're surrounded by your artwork. And just, just uh, before we get into this very exciting uh, piece that you've put together, just a little bit about your background in art. When did you start making artwork? And um, just a little bit about that. I was, I think at seven years old, I decided I was going to be an artist. Wow. And it's just, you know, because I love to draw. And so it kind of went on that way. I was just trying to figure out, well, how can you be an artist? And then I got out of college. I just went and got a master's degree immediately because I didn't know how else I could be an artist, you know, and I didn't have that kind of guts of, you know, being quite, it was early enough that, you know, um, you, you I just came, came into it, you know, when I finally moved to New York. That's You, you, that's you just had to express yourself, I think, is what is what oh, you're telling us. Yeah. You just were driven to say, there's something out here and I want to figure out how to communicate. And how to how to say it? So I tried all sorts of things, draw, drawing, drawing, and then I learned sculpture in grad school, especially some beforehand. And um, yeah, I well, you're figuring out how to survive. Um, so I ended up teaching for a long time. Yeah, I, I didn't want to say when you said uh, you know I want to figure out how to be an artist. I was going to say something to the effect of. Well, then you have basically destined yourself to be poor the, re yes, <laughs> the rest of about, your life. Just about. Just you know, about. You know, like but, but if you were teaching, I, I guess you did. It. Do you have a favorite medium or a favorite type of work or whatever you creating at the time is the favorite? It's actually, I think I really am a sculptor at heart, but that means sculptors draw much more than they paint and much less a color sense than I am. Uh, you know, I'm often working in earth colors and kind of a low palette, but I have worked in all media. And behind me, you can see a big painting on one side um, that I, you know, got very interested again in painting because of the hurricanes that we started to experience. And somehow I wanted to record the kind of force that those winds and waves and everything are. And now, I mean, practically everybody, all uh, artists are all trying to deal with the environment if they're not trying to deal with their own personal right. issues. Yeah. And, uh, so, you know, I actually moving on, I always did a lot of sculpture. And do, do you do you create every day? Do you wake up in the morning and say, well, what am I doing today? Or oh, I not? Wish. I wish. Okay. I, there's <laughs> many, many more demands than that. Don't uh, I wish. Yeah. I, I actually did a great deal last year. I had a, a number of um, one-person exhibitions and 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 it built up to um and out you know outdoor art exhibits and so at that time you're not making new art you're figuring out how all the arrangements i mean some right, of the sure. stuff i've done involved renting trucks all the time i learned how to drive you know what I find funny about that is because here you are and you learn about the materials and paint and here you are renting trucks as part of your, as part of your oh, experience. Yeah. Oh yes. So, I, I just... so, so this brings us to divisions, which um, uh, is, is the, um, uh, you know, the, uh, the sculpture, the project that you worked on. Um, and so tell us what it was. Now let's see. It was originally located, we, we have pictures of it being created and all that, originally located across from the United Nations in the late 90s. Um, what what was it? What is it? And then we'll talk about where it's at now. Um, well, I had done a number of large-scale sculpture installations, and they always had a theme. 
And the kinds of themes that I wanted to work with were not the ones that generally were commissioned by you know, businesses. They don't want to see a memorial that's honoring the survivors of devastating circumstances like wars um, in front of their building, naturally. They want shiny things that look very positive and up, and that just was not what I was interested in making. Interesting. And I started very early on, and there are some of those um, were long time. Uh, one of them now still is cited permanently at Grounds for Sculpture in New Jersey. Mm -hmm. um, it's still um, it's doing fine, but those were done with cast bronze. And I always had that as a media. Uh, since when through my teaching job, I figured out how to get a whole lot of military scrap bronze. We don't think of the military throwing out bronze, but the ships that they wow. commission all have a lot of bronze parts. So we, we have some of the photos. So while you're talking, Anderson, you can run some of these photos. So you then found this material and began to create this work. In fact, most of my pieces have been done like that. In fact, this is um, one of the photos taken at the end of trying to renovate the, the materials that were used in this installation. And I created these wood beams and they were, uh, you know, um, walls from these wood beams. They came out of a building in lower Manhattan that wow. they were throwing out. This is, yes, a photo of the installation. Right. Um, and this, it, as it looks now in Rome, New York, Rome, where, which is where it was moved. Keep going, Anderson, with more of the yeah, pictures. I, I want to show there. some of the, the process of taking it up there. Yes. Talk yes. about renting trucks. <laughs> yeah, well, I didn't drive that one. That really, what, that one came from Ohio, but uh, another artist. Yeah, that's the people at Rome um, who run this a sculpture park. Um, it, on a former military base. So they have tons of equipment that they use. And that's me cleaning the, um, the beams that had been left uh, sto in storage outside. And so they were, you know, dirty. And this took off all whatever old rust had accumulated. But they were painted in originally with automotive paint. And so that automotive paint largely held. Um, and that's me putting a coat of a transparent sealer over the paint on the steel beams. Those steel beams also came from a demolition site. And how did I acquire them? There they are installing these sculptures. How did you acquire them? Uh, um, I oh, happened to be sense. at a conference in Washington, D.C. at the oh. time I was teaching in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. And I went back to Lancaster. I saw those beams lying around, you know, and that were just from the steel skeleton of a building they tore down. And I rented a truck and a couple of young guys who were students loved having a chance to drive that truck to Washington, D.C. And, you know, we gave the guys on the site $50 and they said, lady, which one do you want? You well, know, they, uh, they that, that is it, it is it, it is really a definition of an artist and an artist's mind that you looked at this and said, ah, they, you know, they're ready to toss it to, to the trash. And you're like, wait, this is something. Talk about um, talk about it, it being on display at the um, United Nations. I think there is a photograph of the United well, Nations. Well, I spent a, a year in Germany, and I became thoroughly um, familiar with the tragedies for all humans that war creates. And so I, when I saw those beams, they looked like a war ruin to me, but they were horizontal. And I wanted to stand them up and give them a new life and have a chance for Americans to look at and think about 
what that kind of war means because we have not had 20th century wars on our... Yeah, but not not right. other than that moment of 9-11, of course. And that's where people, that's I think, it. would relate to that. And, and I appreciated that's what right. you said at the beginning, that this is not what people want in front of their houses because they want something beautiful, but quite appropriate in front of uh, the United Nations building, of course. Yes. And... Um, then the last thing, decision I made was that it did need some text to give people an idea of how I was thinking. And it's a fairly abstract text that was put on that signage, but the same thing is written on every uh, one of six of signs that are on the side of those wooden walls. Um, and then why, why did it end up in Rome, New York? Like how did it, why so, Rome? That Rome, is, Rome, yes, yeah. because it was quite a, 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 a cycle since then. Um, the college, uh, Wright State University, agreed to take it when I it had to be moved from the, the site in front of the UN. Um, actually, the community board would have been willing to extend it. They already extended it six months, and they would have extended it again. I think they felt they understood what this public art was about, but there was the signs were translated in the six languages, official languages. Right, and so we've got a, a timely quotation from philosopher Emmanuel Levinas. Each plaque displays a translation in one of the six official languages of the United Nations, and the quote equates being human act with acting humanely. Um, we've got one photograph here of the actual, of what it looks like in, in Rome, New York. So if we could show that, there it is. And um, it, it for, now this is where it's gonna stay. This is the permanent location for it. Yes, and at that, in that photo, only one of the walls or two of the walls have been installed. And another photo that you have, it shows the other walls that we were working on the repairing of those walls over a right. period of a, a week and a half. Basically. If I remember my geography of Rome, New York, it's up Route 17, right? Is that where we're going? It's a, a sort of midway between Buffalo and Albany. Oh, so it's, it's uh, what Quite is that, 80, 81 or whatever it is. Yeah. Anyway, and how do you find it when you get to Rome, New York? Um, there are huge signs to uh, this Griffiths Industry Park. Okay, Gr and that's right. The Griffiths International Sculpture Garden and Nature Trail. I got that. Right. So that's what we're looking for when we go up there. And when you first try to drive into that uh, city, you can't help. Let's see find it. Great. Okay. And Listen, Linda, we're, we're out of time. I'm applauding my longtime friend and a longtime artist. This to me is the best of the Bronx, sharing things about humanness, sharing things about living together, acting humanely and doing it through art so we can all appreciate it and enjoy it. And you did it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Great. Uh, and listen, as you, do, do you have something next? Are you ready to do something next? Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. You'll, you'll let us know what it is and we'll, we'll follow you down the road. Uh, thank you so much. Sure. Hey, uh, folks, that will do it for uh, the Bronx Buzz. Um, we thank Dean for joining us in our first segment. Of course, we thank Linda for all the years of great work. And of course, let's all get up to Rome, New York, and appreciate her work in person. And that will do it. If the curtain don't fall and the creek don't rise, yes, we'll be back next week. Bye.